Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And I'm also today coming to you on behalf of Story Ninjas, which is an independent book publisher that I am a co-founder of. And particularly what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the steampunk novella that I wrote and published a few months ago. I'm going to read you a little excerpt and I'll I'll show you like how to get to it and stuff like that. So um so here we go. All right. And this is really fun for me because for years I've wanted to write books and stuff and I've finally been doing that. You know, you can want to do something and then you do something and it's two completely different things. And I just realized I have to share my screen or else you guys are just going to see my face the whole time. So let me share my screen here. Share my screen. Share my entire screen. Share. All right. Now you see tons of me. We're first going to go to Amazon. I'm just, I mean, I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but just in case you go www.amazon.com. It's going to bring you to this page. You click from here. You just click press K. It's going to bring you to the Kindle store. You press enter. And then now everything we search for will be in the Kindle store. And then what you can do is you can type in, you can type in a couple of things. You can type in steampunk wars, or you could also type in story ninjas. Steampunk wars will be the fastest way. Mine's the one on top here. You click on it. This tells you all the information about it. Gives you a little uh, excerpt here. And I'll, I'll read this off to you right now. Anna Windrider is a gritty airship captain looking for opportunity and adventure. The crew of the Evangeline is in desperate need of coin. While searching for work at the air harbors, Anna is approached by Sir Ernest Walmsley, founder of Atlantis. The famous explorer is leading an expedition to find the lost city, and he offers her a job to transport his team beyond the rim. Despite her reservations, Anna cannot resist the call to adventure. Little does she know, dark forces are plotting against her. Not only will Anna's world be turned upside down, but she'll be forced to make a decision that will affect every man, woman, and child in the Empire. Within the steampunk dystopian adventure, you'll find airships, dirigibles, air harbors, Victorian era, era speech, style, design, and clothing, pirates, explorers, automatons, alchemy, modified weapons, monsters, ancient ruins, and much, much more. So there you go. That is that is the little summary of my book. <clears throat> and then if you, I've already bought it, so I can just click read now. But you, you would have a thing here that says like buy, you buy it. It's $2.99. It's less than a cup of coffee, and it's far more enjoyable. And you could read it with a cup of coffee. Now, what's going to happen is... Boop. It's going to show up when you buy it, either on your phone or on your Kindle or on your iPad app, whatever. Right now, I'm on the Kindle Cloud app. And you can see like a whole bunch of my books here. A lot of these books are actually uh, Story Ninja's books. This is another book, Ste uh, The Unwanted, that we published, Past the Fringe. My brother's series uh, in The Fuzz, which is kind of like a comedy drama here. My, uh, this is a, a book on military transitions. My book on myth mythological storytelling. And here we have Steampunk Wars. And before I open it, I do want to show you too. Here's my brother. For any, any of you who are Christians and enjoy Christian stories about angels and stuff like that. My brother wrote a book called Angelion, uh, and that's this book right here. So we'll click into Steampunk Wars, and let's see. We'll just we'll read the first few chapters. 
Let's see here. Oop. Ah. All right, so we're in the book. Here we go. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> I don't normally do this, but I'm going to try real hard for you guys to make this engaging. Anna Windrider sat at the captain's chair of the Evangeline, revolver in hand. After inspecting the barrel, she flicked the cylinder into place, then rolled it across her, across her sleeve. Each chamber clicked as the mechanism rotated. The weapon comforted her. The smoothness of the handle reassured her. In some ways, the pistol was the only thing that made sense anymore. She locked the hammer back into position and looked around the room. Various dials and gauges surrounded her, each one lifeless, much like the ship itself. Anna used to consider this place home, but how could anywhere be safe? Not now, not after what she had seen. She pushed the image from her mind and inhaled another draw of her pipe. The opium only dulled the memories. It did not erase them. Anna could still hear the laborer's screams. They echoed in her mind, and she gripped the gun tighter. That damned explorer. She shouldn't have taken the job. If only she'd listened to her gut. If only. A board creaked. Anna spun around, gun raised. Her index finger hovered over the trigger, but she saw nothing. Instead, her reflection glared back at her through the glass. The visage that stared back, a mere shadow of her former self. Disheveled hair, pale skin, tattered, tat tattered clothes. She shuddered and exhaled. As she slumped back into the captain's chair, tears slid down her cheeks. Madness threatened to take hold of her mind. Nothing made sense anymore. Nothing was right. Only a month ago, the world represented a place of opportunity and adventure. But now, why had she taken that job? She shook her head. Fool, she said out loud. Then pressed the barrel to her temple. Dun, dun, dun. So that's chapter one. I'll give you guys chapter two as well. Just uh, out of the kindness of my heart. If Anna had to pick one place in the entire empire to call home, it would be the air harbors. Vast bodies of dirigibles and airships filled the docks. Engines roared as they came and went. The aromas of food mixed with the exhaust, giving the wharf a smell of bacon and oil. Droves of citizens from every walk of life in every corner of the empire came here to do business. To Anna, the harbors represented a place of opportunity and adventure. She sat at the base of the boarding ramp, boots propped up on a folding table. Behind her, the Evangeline hovered. The cables that held the airship to the dock sang in the breeze. Its domed gas envelope provided shade against the afternoon sun. Before her, Anna watched the harbor go about its business. Vendors held trays of food in front of passers-by. A retailer hawked his wares, strange creatures from some far-flung part of the world. He claimed that they gave blessings of good luck. On the other side of the dock, a captain haggled over fuel prices. Further down, she could see local girls trying to talk, sweet talk, a bunch of sailors. Anna shook her head. Everyone does business here. Normally, she enjoyed her time at the harbors, but weeks had passed since their last job, if that's what you called it. At first, the crew jumped at a chance for shore leave, but now relaxation turned to restlessness, and restlessness turned to boredom. She already lost one crew member to a rival captain offering better pay. Armin and Kristoff were at each other's throats, and Jen would probably quit if she didn't get any coin soon. Her crew needed a job. Anna tapped her boot against the table. A large cargo shipment sat near their mooring point. It arrived earlier this morning. Normally, that was a good sign, but the shipment came with no manifesto, 
no instructions for delivery, no message, or even anything to identify who it belonged to. It was just there, taking up space, space in front of her ship, space that could be given to cargo they could actually transport. She glared at the crates as if she could melt them with her eyes. Hour after hour went by and they continued sitting there, refusing to declare their intent. Reaching into her jacket, Anna retrieved a pocket watch and checked the time. Her first mate, Armin, should have been back by now. She'd sent him to solve the cargo mystery hours ago. How long did it take to get a name? Maybe he stopped for some local cuisine, she speculated. While it wasn't like Armin to meander, he had quite an appetite for exotic foods. Another thought popped in her mind. Perhaps it was military equipment. If that was the case, Armin probably had to deal with a dock official, which meant it could take all day. She rolled her eyes. Great. Anna tucked the watch back in her pocket, removed her gloves, and set to picking her nails with a small boot knife. Captain Windrider, I presume, someone asked. She didn't recognize the voice, but it sounded like money. Anna craned her neck to get a better look at the stranger. An older man approached. That depends, she replied, slipping the knife beneath her ruffled sleeve. Who's asking? While the question seemed innocent enough, it not many customers came looking for her by name. The gentleman stopped at her table. Golden gears decorated his top hat and adorned his duck-tailed suit. He held a cane in his hand. The handle was a dragon's head. To Anna, the man looked like a stick bug dressed in an expensive suit. I beg your pardon, the man said. He removed his top hat and bowed. Silver hairs danced in the breeze. Sir Ernest Walmsley, at your service. Excitement jolted through Anna's body, and she sat up straight. If memory served her correctly, Ernest Walmsley was the explorer that found the lost city of Atlantis. So, if the gentleman was who he claimed to be, then he definitely had money, and she definitely wanted his business. Anna tried to act nonchalant. Walmsley, sounds familiar. He chuckled, then realized Anna wasn't joking. The old man leaned in and whispered, Atlantis. Oh, right, Atlantis. She snapped her fingers. You're that explorer, Anna said, attempting to remain stony. If Walmsley sensed, sensed nervousness, then he would have the upper hand in negotiations. Indeed, he said, as he adjusted his bow tie. Although I try not to take the credit, as I was merely the instigator of the in expedition. My crew and fellow explorers found the lost city. Is that so? The man nodded. Anna's father tracked the Atlantis expedition with great interest when she was a child. She recalled newspaper paper articles and wireless broadcasts about the discovery. For someone who didn't want to claim credit for Atlantis, Mr. Wamsley spent an awful lot of time speaking to the press. So, Mr. Wams, Ernest, please, Captain, call me Ernest, he smiled. Ernest then, what can I do for you, she asked. The fact that she was speaking face to face with her father's idol felt surreal. You've already discovered Atlantis. You have a fleet of airships, from what I understand. What do you need from me? My crew doesn't take illegal jobs, if that's what this is about. He chuckled. Illegal. Oh, heavens no. Quite the opposite, in fact. I want your crew because I am reliably informed that you are one of the few captains who will go beyond the rim. And his eyes narrowed. That information wasn't widely known. You were informed correctly, sir, but it's not something that we do often. She, said, she gave him a sideways look. Or cheaply, for that matter. He waved the idea away 
as though it meant nothing. Money won't be a problem, he said. Anna supposed that to him it probably wasn't. He reached inside his overcoat and produced a scroll of paper. With a flourish, he unrolled it on the table. It took me some time and considerable effort to find this map, he said. Anna glanced over the document. It was an aeronautical map, not much different from the one her navigator used. If something special lay hidden in its charts, Anna could, couldn't find it. What's so special about this map? It shows something that no other map in the world does. And what's that? The old man removed a monocle from his vest and placed it over his eye. This, he said, tapping to the northern part of the map. Anna followed his finger. Her eyes went wide when she saw what he pointed at. The dot indicated a city far north of the rim. Most other maps marked this area as unexplored territory, so she hadn't bothered to look there. Upon further inspection, she noticed more details. Other landmarks filled the area beyond the rim, supposed islands and continents. A city? she asked, still reviewing the map. Indeed, Ernest said. He raised a finger. But not just any city. It has no name, at least not one that is recorded in any history book. According, according to Atlantean legend, the gods built a temple here, and I believe that a forgotten treasure lies within. Treasure? Excitement surged through Anna's body. What kind of treasure? Forgotten secrets. He gazed into the distance. Secrets that explain the technology of the ancients. Many explorers from across the empire dreamed of unlocking the mysteries of the ancients. While many ruins and artifacts remained, not much was known about the ancients themselves. Somehow they constructed the most sophisticated structures on the planet, and yet no one knew what they were used for. Moreover, they seemed to have disappeared suddenly and without a trace. Scientists gave theories, of course. Most revolved around crystal technology and portals. Others suggested aliens from outer space. For years, many academics, including Anna's father, believed that Atlantis held the answers. But after decades of excavation, nothing significant turned up. Personally, Anna didn't have the luxury of caring about such theories. Her concerns were far more immediate. But whether the old man was right or not, a lost city beyond the rim would be quite, would be quite a find. Teaming up with Walmsley on an excursion like this on an excursion this important would surely boost her reputation in certain circles, which in turn would help with future employment. But a temple of the gods? In her experience, so-called gods tended to be tall tales meant to scare children or, in this case, seduce explorers. They normally turned out to be disgruntled creatures or pirates looking for a ransom. Anna would rather not tangle with either. She may be desperate for coin, but not that desperate. She rolled up the map and handed it back to the old man. The hunting corpse is further down the dock, sir. You asked me what I wanted, Captain. Ernest drew himself to his full dignified height. I want to find at this city and claim it for the Empire. I want to be first, and I want you and your crew to help me do it. Anna considered the man for a long moment. His face could barely conceal his excitement. Whether the city actually existed or not, he believed every word he spoke. But given the fact that he was the founder of Atlantis, his story held more credence than most. Have you bev ever been outside the rim, my lord? I must admit, I have not. As you know, Atlantis sits within the borders. What, if I might ask, was your experience of it? Fascinating and terrifying in equal measure. She studied his reaction carefully. When he merely nodded, she decided that the venture might be worth pursuing. At least he seemed to respect the danger of the world beyond the rim. 
we may be able to help. But as I mentioned earlier, we don't go beyond the rim cheaply. I know you said that money won't be a problem, but she left the last part hang. She left the last part of the sentence unspoken, allowing the subtext to hang in the air. Name a price. Anna responded instantly. The number she gave had been in her mind ever since he mentioned the rim. The price was extortionate, even for what he was asking. But she wanted to see just how deep his pockets were. Done, he said, clapping his hands together. He extended his arm for a handshake to seal the deal. Captain, you won't regret, regret this. Anna shook, her, shook his hand while replaying the answer in her head. The man agreed to her price without a second thought. She stared at him, somewhat dazed from the unexpected response. She imagined all of the things that she could buy with the money. They could fix the engines. Hell, they could buy brand new engines. They could finally get the shell resprayed. They could stock the kitchen with proper food and supplies. Hire a full crew. She could even pay off Fist and get his goons off her back. What he offered was more than a small fortune. It was freedom for Anna and her crew. After a moment, she realized that Ernest was still talking and pulled herself back to reality. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? She asked. Can we start loading onto the ship? I do wish to make good time after all, Captain. Loading? She asked. Ernest gestured toward the group of men behind him. They carried the mystery pile of cargo from earlier. She eyed Ernest. You. I like to be prepared, Captain. My apologies if I have overstepped my bounds. He bowed, then returned to direct his men. Anna stood incredulous as new questions filled her mind. Who exactly was Ernest Wamsley? And how the hell would she convince her crew to go beyond the rim? Dun, dun, dun. All right. So we're going to stop sharing now. And back to me. Okay, maybe not the best reading in the world. I, you know, don't, haven't done this very often. But I hope you guys enjoyed that little snippet, that little excerpt. And if you're interested, of course, I'm going to say, please go to Amazon and check it out. I really think you'll enjoy the story if you are into steampunk. If you're into adventure type stories, this is like classic type of adventure story. And for anybody who follows the channel and you know that I do studies on monomyth and stuff like this, this novella follows the monomyth, at least the beginning part, fairly close. Now it doesn't go – actually, it, does, it follows the monomyth, but um, it, it's hard to explain without getting in – to a whole message about the monomyth here but you'll see you'll see archetypes in there you'll see stages in there most of the stages are in there but you have to remember it's a small piece of a bigger whole there's there's more stories more novellas that are planned to come out as a matter of fact i've been working on one this week it's the sequel so anyways hope that was enjoyable hope that was helpful and as i said before uh here i'm going to share my screen one last time before i leave here so I can show you guys one other thing. So as I said before, you can go on Amazon. You can get it here. You guys are probably familiar with that. Now, if you want to see the other stuff that we provide at Story Ninjas, just click right here on Story Ninjas, and it's going to take you to our page where you see all of our stuff. You can check out our blog posts. You can, you can uh, check out here are a lot of our books. We've got our Dragon Slayer book, my mythology book, Dark Tales. That's a like campfire stories. Uh, my brother created a JavaScript fundamental course. It's a book that walks you through how to how to do Java fundamentals. All, I mean, all kinds of good stuff here. Um, if you if you're about to have a wedding or you know somebody that's going to have a wedding, there's uh, how to give the killer best man speech, League of Assassins. My brother's full book series on the fuzz, he, he's got a, a, a one, a, like they're all combined into one right here. Uh, anyways, go ahead and check it out. They're all here. It's really cool stuff. 
And then you can also, let me show you this, you can also go www.story-ninjas.com and it will take you here where, if it takes you there, here we go, here's our website. You can check out, again, all, all the stuff that we've got going on here. You can contact us if you'd like to send questions or anything like that. And I'm not going to go through all this. This I only intended on really doing the book. But uh, since I got you here, I've also got he, – these are all the services that we provide. If you're an aspiring author, an entrepreneur, CEO, or a small business owner, we have all of these different services here that we provide to try to help people get their stories told or get their, their brands – you know, promote your brand, create uh, books for for uh, if you're an entrepreneur or something that that create lead magnets. I mean, all kinds of different stuff. We hit, you can subscribe. You uh, you can contact us. Every page has a contact thing. So, uh, anyways, I I've been meaning to show everybody the book for a while, and I figure what what a better way to do it than you know. To read it to everyone. So, hope you guys like that. Hope it was cool. Got a lot of other cool stuff on the way. But uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Uh, and by the way, this whole post was because someone very recently asked how the book was going and stuff. So I figured, you know, let me just show you guys the book. Check it out, right? And then, um, it, you know, the usual stuff. If you like it, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. You'll get like more content. You get to see all the other videos that we've done. It's gonna, you know, show you all that stuff. And then lastly, if you know someone else that might benefit from this channel, then feel free to let them know. All right, guys, take it easy. See ya.